Hey guys, it's Norm from Tested. It's Adam from Tested. And we are here back in the cave yep. to talk about, again, for some reason, Blade Runner guns. We, it's a topic that you cannot have enough to say about. Well, it's funny that we're going in kind of reverse order because uh, we did a previous video on Tested showing some terrific interpretation kits and modifications upon the Blade Runner blaster done by some wonderful model makers who I know. And a quick refresher, the Blade Runner pistol, yes. pistol that you have a huge affinity for, uh, not shown very, people have spent hours and hours and hours just trying to get a look at it. Well, yeah, and the, the, the details about the gun are not really easy to see, especially if it's 1987 and you're watching a VHS tape of it. Right. Um, the original maker of the gun is still somewhat a mystery. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of research done by, by prop aficionados and Blade Runner fanatics about the specific details about the gun's construction. And now pretty much everything that we would ever want to know about it is known. Mm -hmm. But it took a long time to get there. That only happened within the last three years, three or four years, that the original was found, auctioned off, uh, restored and auctioned off, and now it's in a private collection. Mm. And but so that's when information actually came out with the real photos, not just stills. That's where many things were both confirmed and... Yeah figured out to be not correct. Which is part of the fun. Yes, no, absolutely, because people had been, you know, devoting hundreds and thousands of their hours to figuring out what that screw was, what that little thing was, why this was that way. Now we pretty much know all of that stuff, but uh, my obsession has been going on for 25 years. Wow, so and we talked about all the kits. Yes. The, the kits that people from the RPF, for example, mm -hmm. have made, their own castings, and today we're going to talk about your own build and your own history with the yeah. gun, along with some of the notable uh, guns that you've collected, Blade Runner pistols. So where do we start? Where should we start? Uh, I, let's start? Let's start with this. This this is actually a pretty important piece. It looks like a crappy casting. The mold parting lines aren't very good. It's uh, There's a lot of bubbles in yeah. it. But what this is is actually, I think, a third generation casting from molds that were made for the Blade Runner production. Now, in Blade Runner, there's a scene uh, when, when Deckard confronts Leon, mm -hmm. uh, and he pulls his gun out, and Leon smacks his gun out of his hand, and it goes skitter skittering down the street. Now, what you may not know, and I've said this before on the site, is that every time you see a gun in someone's hand in a movie, unless they're firing it, it's probably made of rubber. Yeah. Guns are big chunks of steel, and you can it's get heavy. really hurt by moving them around, hitting them, and they're expensive, so you don't want an actor banging it on the ground. So you give them a rubber stunt pistol. Mm -hmm. That was a rubber stunt gun, and this is the casting that was made one of the castings that was made for the film, or this is a, a casting out of the molds from that. So when the original gunsmith armorer made the, the gun, it was heavy, it was made from real gun parts, they casted that mm -hmm. for the stunt pistols, and this is of that casting generations right. down. Exactly, now this isn't, uh, how do I put this? The original gun wasn't fully perfectly completed when they made this casting. Oh. So, and there are some details about it that show the gun under construction. So that's just part of the production process. That's a part of the production process and it also gives us some insight into the gun's construction and how you know it went to production, Harrison picked it up, oh, I'd rather have it be a little like this, so they modified right. it, et cetera. But this is uh, where all the original information about the Blade Runner gun came about. One of these uh, came into the world somewhere in the, I'd say the mid 90s, if not the early 90s, um, and uh, there's a bazillion of these out there. But this is a casting off the real one. You can see it's got the original serial number 5223. Mm -hmm. That denotes that it's, it's totally accurate. Uh, and I keep this in its crappy state, unfixed up, because you know it symbolizes that, that early obsession. And it is a direct connection, tactile connection, to the production, yeah, to the movie. exactly, exactly. Uh, so second up is this one. It doesn't look at all like any yeah. of the others. You wouldn't uh, be able to call this out as a Blade Runner gun. No, except that this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is my friend Sean Morgan. Uh, he goes by the handle Morgan13 on the RPF, and he is a long-standing high-level model maker. He's done some wonderful things. Sean went so far as to build his own endoskeleton out of wood. And it's fantastic. So what Sean did was, uh, in one of the Blade Runner sketchbooks, are sketches of Sid Mead, who's the production designer mm -hmm. and designer of all the futurist stuff in Blade Runner. Um, Sid Mead had a concept sketch of his idea for a Blade Runner gun. And this is that. And Sean went so far as to make a kit of Sid Mead's Blade Runner pistol, and I had it chrome. Was the the sketch, was it just a 2D sketch, or did it yeah. have dimensions? No, it's just a 2D sketch, and, and... So from a 2D drawing, yeah. fleshed it out, and got the depth, and, 
and then it's, I guess it's symmetrical on both sides. It's mostly symmetrical. In fact, actually, there's a hinge here where supposedly, I guess, the mm -hmm. barrel would open up. Who knows why? Um, Sid include, I know that Sid actually has one of these, that Sean got one into his hands. And this is, it's chrome, but I haven't finished the paint job. I actually want to weather it down and make it look a little more beat up. And that's a cool thing for, that people do for other props as well. For example, like Darth Vader's helmet, the original Quarry sketches, people have made, you know, realistic 3D models of them. And absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, if you're a prop guy and you're in love with the Stormtrooper costume, you're going to want, once you've completed your collection of the New Hope, mm -hmm. the Empire, and the Jedi Stormtrooper helmets, which are all slightly different, yep. well, then you can go on to get the Ralph McQuarrie early storyboard versions and yeah. all of that. So this is part of that, you know, collecting everything you possibly could. Um, this is an all-metal, it's a zinc, pewter and lead uh, version of the Blade Runner pistol made by a guy named, uh, who went by the handle Sidkit. Now, uh, Sidkit- Starting Kit, to look a little better. It, this, is, this is actually a wonderful reproduction. Uh, this is uh, Sid, now he did copy some other early Blade Runner researchers uh, pieces in this. So there is some recasting in this. Sid was not without controversy. Um, but uh, somewhere in the early 2000s, I actually contacted Sid and I convinced him to make a run of all metal Blade Runner guns. Oh. He at that point did uh, ones that were hybrids of metal and plastic mm -hmm. parts. I convinced him to do a run um, and I bought the first 20. Wow. And so this is actually serial number 001 from Sid's line. Um, this is actually the first time I've mentioned this publicly that I was responsible <laughs> for that run. Um, and I will tell Everybody, I didn't know that Sid was recasting at the point in which I asked him to do this. Uh, later on, I confirmed for myself that, yeah, a couple of parts were recast. But How many separate metal parts are there? There's spot? a lot. I think there's over 50. So even though you bought it as a kit, you got like, you know, in the mail, it was a lot 50 of different work. parts and you saw the Absolutely. It was a lot of work. Now, in the business of accurate Blade Runner replicas, this is the gold standard. This came out of Japan a couple of years ago. It's the Tomenosuke Blaster. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm sure someone will tell me if I'm not. Um, this comes from some Japanese Blade Runner fanatics who had, well, I should go back to the beginning. When the original Blade Runner gun surfaced in 2009, I think, at Worldcon. 2009? Again, if I'm wrong, <laughs> go ahead and tell us. Um, when it surfaced at Worldcon, uh, it created a tremendous stir in the prop collecting community. Many people drove tens of hours to get to Worldcon to photograph it in person. And these Japanese guys went and photographed and took pictures of it while it was there. Um, this blaster is metal and plastic. Um, every part that should be metal is metal. Every part that should be plastic is wow. plastic. The, the castings and the finishing is absolutely pristine. And uh, they released two versions. They released one that was a weathered version that's more like the one we see in the mm -hmm. movie. And then they released one that is this this one, which is called the As Issued yeah. Blade Runner Gun. Which is, I don't think we've talked about this before. For weapons and blasters, like, even though they live in lived in universes, yes. worlds, some people like having it as if it was issued from like, a blast tech or something. Well, and if we, if, you know, we'll eventually cover my R2-D2. When we do, we'll talk about the fact that everyone who ends up finishing their R2-D2 has a decision to make once they're yeah. done is, do you weather it? Mm -hmm. Which means you literally have to take a hammer to him and beat the crap out of him, because R2, the real R2, is beat totally up. beat to hell. So uh, this is their brand new, as issued, if you're a brand new Blade Runner, this is your sidearm that they hand you. And really, it couldn't be a, a more beautiful piece, really well done. And these guys actually put up on the web their entire build log. So oh. every piece that they hand machined, they showed every machining process, every pass they did to make all these parts from scratch. Even though things like this plastic magazine are available, they didn't rely on any of that. They hand machine every part and it, it just, it couldn't be more accurate and more of a lovely piece. And there's a working action, you have yeah. rounds inside. Absolutely. It comes up. Wow, and, and this, I mean, a limited set, they don't make this anymore. Uh, no, 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 I believe you can still buy these. They're, oh. they're, they're not cheap. They're it's, about... it's for people who love the gun, but don't love it enough to build it. Yes, this is, this is um, over $1,000 wow. to purchase one of these. Um, and, you know, depending on where you are in the world, you might not even be able to get it shipped to you if you're in Australia or the UK. Does, does it have the, the orange, no, does it uh, even have an uh, No, it stick? did have the orange cap. I painted it. Oh. Appropriately. Yes, just for the, yeah. Um, so, 
These are the wonderful reproductions of the Blade Runner pistol. Um, there are some out there that are not so great. Um, this is actually a kid's toy. It weighs about two ounces, um, and it is clearly attempting to copy the Blade Runner gun in some key, in some key ways. If you'll see, they've actually got a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a bolt, yep. a, a bolt handle there, just like that. They've they've copied a bunch of elements, and the overall shape they've copied quite quite closely in some ways. In other ways, but not sold as like a Blade Runner costume kit. For, no, for no, no, no. Although there are people who have bought these uh, and then they sell them on eBay for a lot as like a Blade Runner that, yeah. toy. Yeah, and they can charge like dumb amounts of money. This is right. like a sixty cent toy. There's nothing, nothing interesting about this. Um, for the uh, you know, not the surname cosplayer. Right. Exactly. Um, this is a very funny hybrid, weird, uh, weird gun. Uh, this is actually made by a uh, you know, the batteries. Oh yeah, there we go. The, it lights up. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the lights are there. Um, this is made by a prop guy. It is clearly to me a modification of uh, uh, Rick Ross's blaster, which we talked about mm -hmm. in the last Blade Runner gun podcast. Um, I believe they took castings of Rick Ross's and then they heavily, heavily modified it to make this kind of bulldog mofo of a Blade Runner gun. It's got a bunch of details that are very similar to the original, a bunch of details that are actually quite different. Yeah, the, for people who don't know the nuances, you, you, this could pass off as a Blade Runner. It has a gestalt of a Blade absolutely, Runner Absolutely, absolutely. But once you hold it up against the original, you can see that the two are, are very, very different. Uh, and this one's much larger in many ways, which leads me to believe it's a Rick Ross modification. Um, it's almost like a caricature version. And I bought it because of that. I kind of really liked what a caricature it was. It's it's sort of ugly and 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 it's, it's hideous, genuinely. <laughs> but to, to round out my collection, I really wanted it when I saw it. It wasn't that expensive. Um, now, in that vein. There is this one, which floats around the web and shows up on eBay from time to time as a Blade Runner pistol. This one is so inaccurate in every possible way. Again, if I hold it up against the Tomonosuke, you'll see that there's almost no dimension that's correct. There's, everything's out of whack. Yeah, um, it's and not yet, as curved, lacks yeah. that organic feel. Yeah. They've tried to copy this side plate, but they've kind of missed. The magazine down mm -hmm. here is the wrong size. The barrels are the wrong size. Um, I believe this is actually made out of like wood and Bondo. But I collected it because it's sort of like outsider art. You know, it, it, it's so lovely and there's so much love and effort in this that I had to have it. Wow, it's almost like someone took a, a vector image of the gun and dragged it and just stretched out the dimensions. Exactly, and there's things like this, like the um, this safety, which is actually uh, from the original Steyr Mannlicher rifle, here put on its side, yeah. right, flipped uh, 90 degrees. Why, I, who wasn't looking at pictures? It's almost like they saw a picture, studied it really, really carefully, and then put it away and didn't consult it throughout the entire build process. Wow. <laughs> at the end, it's like a, a highlight, so you'll spot the difference. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And this is something that shows up on the Replica Prop Forum all the time is people who really collect something can see all the differences yeah. instantaneously where to the newbie they might not see them so clearly. But this one, no one couldn't see that this is wrong in almost every detail, which makes it awesome. And, and lets you appreciate that the right detail that you have in yours. Yeah, well, more. yes. Uh, yeah, they even kit bashed some like like stuff from a spaceship on the bottom. It's it's Well, on the bottom here. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. All right. So now we're uh, moving on to my obsession. Yes. Now let's move these over here and let's put these down here. These four guns demonstrate 25 years of my obsession with the Blade Runner pistol. You've only bought four in 25 years. Well, These are yes. The, <laughs> yes. The four I, milestones. I've built four, I have built a couple of Rick Ross kits yeah. up. One of them got lost in the mail on its way to me after mm -hmm. having it fixed up. Uh, I plan to build other Rick Ross and the other, the other kits that I've got. But these are the four that I've built for myself. And this is the first one. This one uh, I built. Now, it's hard to look at this because it is also wrong in pretty much every detail, uh, just like the one that I collected. Um, the best way to describe this is that I looked at still frames from the VHS and then took sketches from them because we don't have digital cameras in 1986. Yeah. Um, so the front you can see is actually, if I hold it up with this, you can see that 
Okay, it, on along the front, the barrel I've, looks I've right. managed yep. to get some of the gestural aspect of the shape mm -hmm. correct. Um, and actually, from a size standpoint, I'm not far off in the overall size of it. Um, I worked very hard on all of this part. This is, um, I believe, this is the handle of a bayonet from a plastic gun kit. Okay. Um, this is uh, this is from a scope of a plastic gun kit, and then there's lots of model kit parts in there. And I had, was building the barrel for weeks, and then kind of got tired and bought this cheap toy laser gun on Canal Street in New York. That turns out this handle is really beautiful. It turns out to have been designed by a very famous Italian toy designer named oh. Edison Giacatoli, and. Uh, you can actually still find this gun on eBay from time to time. Just I've been, the, the handle. Just the handle with a totally different yeah. gun on it. And I had that gun, and I've been looking for one to replicate. I kind of would like to rebuild this one and make it neater and cleaner um, just to have that back again. And this is months and months of work for me. You Like, you know, airplane putty, and this wasn't, there's no crazy glue in this. This is all hot glue and epoxy and just lots and lots of labor. And so the I mean, even though the handle is completely different, there were no shots in the VHS of the, the, the handle, the grip. No, very few. In fact, the only place you can kind of see the handle is when uh, Deckard comes home after his uh, bout with Leon. He takes his shirt off and cleans his blood out of his mm -hmm. mouth, uh, and you can see it strapped to his hip. But oh. even then, it's not very clear. So you just like the look of this one. I yeah. like it, it, This is me being a prop maker, being like, I want to finish this. And yeah. so I did, and I, I made it look like this. Okay. So um, from the VHS. Chess, your first Blade Runner pistol. Yes, that's number one. All right, now this is the second Blade Runner gun that I built, um, and it, it looks great. Yeah, it, it looks, from the undiscerning eye, mm -hmm. looks very much like the real thing. Again, if we hold it up against the Tomenosuke, you can see that the details are, by and large, all there, and they're pretty darn correct and close. So what Screw information all there. was available at this point? to make this one. This came from a, there's a, a toy store here in San Francisco called Heroes Club over yes, on Clement. of course, Clement and Seven. Okay. Yes, yeah. and I've been shopping there for 25 years. Yeah. And way back then, they had a magazine where someone did a scratch build of the Blade Runner gun, and it was beautiful, beautiful reference. Mm. Japanese modeling magazines, the absolute pinnacle <laughs> of really, really obsessive, perfect model making. So I had some really great pictures. Now. I spent, again, I was new in the special effects industry. So this is, I built this somewhere around 1994. Yeah, 1994, 95, somewhere around there. And uh, I, this is again, hundreds of hours of work. Everything scratch built by me, slowly, painstakingly, uh, lines etched in, everything sanded smooth. Uh, and I eventually went so far as to actually cast it in a six part kit. Uh, and I sold three of them. <laughs> Literally three. I have like dozens of castings wow. up in my storage, but I only ever sold three. Uh, it got covered in some adult magazine, actually, oh. in their like Christmas gear, like a heavy up. metal type magazine. Yeah, right? exactly. No, no, more of oh. more adult than that. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I have it somewhere in my archives, uh, and. This particular model of my Blade Runner gun, I actually was working on Bicentennial Man and I sent it to be chromed along with a bunch of other stuff we were having chromed on Bicentennial <laughs> Man and so I weathered it. Now, there's a problem with this one. Yeah. And the problem is one of size. It's a little too small. I had all this perfect topological reference, but mm -hmm. I had no size reference. And so you can see that I'm off by easily 20% wow. here. So when I finally realized I had this, and then someone gave me one of these, and I was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> I was like, no way. I spent all that time to be that far off. Yeah, you're pretty proud of this, I, I, I was super proud of this. This was my thing. This, to me, was going to be the ultimate pistol. I was finally going to have the perfect Blade Runner blaster. I was going to cast it in metal, and it would be heavy, and I could, you know, have it. And then it was too small, and instantly I was like, I'm done with you. I hate you. You got to start from scratch. So... I forgot about, not really forgot about, but I put away the idea of making a Blade Runner blaster for another, uh, what would then end up being uh, maybe almost 10 years. Wow. 
Cut to 2004, 2005. Mythbusters is now a hit, and I'm making money. Mm -hmm. And I realize, you know, one of the things that's been stopping me from making a, a perfect Blade Runner gun is that the guns it's actually built from. It is built off of the of a lot of parts from two real guns: a uh, 222 Steyr Mannlicher target rifle uh, and a 45 caliber Bulldog revolver. Right. Um, for the receiver. Or yeah, for the well, so the the bulldog the bulldog is the interior frame. It's actually mm. what held the bullets and the charges that the gun okay. fired with. The manlicker is the top part. Yeah. Um, and I realized I could buy those, so I got a gun license and I purchased them and I demilled them. I took out the firing pins and took apart the guns. And slowly over five years, between 2004 and 2010, six years, uh, and I'm still playing around with this. Um, I made this, which is. Uh, for me, the most accurate replica of the Blade Runner pistol I could possibly have. Um, and this is before the real prop came I into auction? The and real prop, the Worldcon gun came into being and I was mostly done with this. It answered a bunch of questions and there are many modifications I made on this based mm -hmm. on things I learned from the Worldcon uh, reveal. That, at that point you could modify this build and not have to start over. Exactly, but uh, in, in this, there is only one piece of this that I didn't build myself or is not accurate from one of the real guns. It's a Steyr Mannlicher back part, uh, the steel barrel. Uh, actually, I bought the steel barrel from another guy. Um, I hand machined the gun butt, the grip frame that wraps around the bulldog frame. I handmade the trigger guard out of mild steel and actually filed it to this perfection and then ground it, polished it, brought it up, bent it into shape and welded it in. Um, the aluminum side cover I CNC'd and actually it is accurate in almost every detail to the original. Uh, so this is my baby. This is the one that, and I beat this up. Like I, you know, yeah. I'll carry this back and forth to the house and I put it down on the table. I let it Oh, it doesn't live in a around. display case forever. It's no, 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 no. Held and Every bit that this gets beat up only makes it more accurate, oh, as far great. as I'm concerned. And yeah. you can see how it feels. It's just really hefty. And it feels genuinely like something loved by someone. That's, to me, the part and parcel of the... I love the Temenosuke Blaster for its accuracy, mm -hmm. but this is never going to have a kind of this-is-mine feel to it. It's too perfect. And it's also not using the original parts of the no, guns, right? it's and, not. And that contributes a lot to the, the distribution of weight. It totally does. In fact, one of the things that people didn't know when the Blade Runner Blaster showed up at World Con was the actual color. Everyone thought it was black because it looks really mm -hmm. black, but it's clear from the World Con that they actually stripped off the bluing of the mm -hmm. Steyr rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, when I, I had a Steyr rifle, this gun for the first like four years of its life, five years of its life, it had a black receiver. And then I saw in the World Con it's not black. So I looked up, how do you remove bluing? Oh, I soak it in white vinegar for an hour. Lo, I soaked it in white vinegar, brushed it, and it instantly looked precisely like the World Con wow. gun. I was like super excited that the, the, the patina just worked perfectly. So you said you're not done, you're still working on this. What's there left to do? Totally not done. Um, I'm going to replace this magazine entirely because I cut it slightly wrong and it's a little bit off angle mm -hmm. in a way that almost no one but me could see but that matters. Uh, there's a couple of little screws over on this side that aren't totally accurate. This side cover is actually from one of the SID kit guns, I believe, uh, and I'd like to replace it with one that I hand built. Uh, so that is a, that's a key piece of, uh, of machining that I have to do. Um, the triggers are real, real triggers. The, uh, the thing can't fire, it doesn't have a firing mm -hmm. pin or anything, but uh, this is the, my pinnacle of the form. Um, but there's one more. There's one, always one more. Well, I, I one wanted more thing. to. I wanted to do a limited run of these. I wanted to. I wanted to make castings of this. This is actually uh, not doesn't have the five two two three uh, serial number. This mine's actually nine six one three. Right, because that's that's the barrel you, you this bought. This is mine, and yep. it's the. I I don't feel the slavish need for the serial numbers okay. to match. There are people who have made their own Blade Runner guns just like I made this, and they have actually filled ground and re-stamped the oh serial goodness. number. I'm not willing to do that. I don't need to. I, I'm fine to have been issued a different one than Deckard's, right? Um, but I wanted a limited edition and I wanted to have some of these for trade. And so uh, earlier this year, I went to my mold maker and I had him make these. Now, this is kind of entertaining. 
Uh, so remember how I said that this is cast from a stunt yeah, Going pistol. back to the beginning, yeah. Going back to the beginning, this is a stunt pistol. So Leon Deckard pulls out his gun, Leon smacks it out of his hand. How does the actor, Brian James, smack that gun safely? Well, they made it out of rubber. Yeah. So, my Blade Runner gun, made out of rubber. So you have a stunt casting. So I made a stunt casting of the Blade Runner pistol. I don't need it to be super crazy accurate because I've got the super crazy accurate one. But I love the idea that it's a stunt casting. That brings it right back to the idea of the film as, as you know, I'm participating along the same lines as the, the model makers that worked on the original And it's film. your stunt casting because it has your serial number. Precisely. So if anyone tries to recast this, yeah. I'll be able to see. Not that I'm going to you know be able to stop them or anything, but at least I'll understand the provenance of this. Um, and so uh, this is this is sort of coming full circle. Oh, also, remember how I said that this gun was cast from the Blade Runner gun before it was finished? Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the ways in which that's really obvious, the main way, is in the, the butt plate here. See, the butt plate is square. Uh, yeah. On the real Blade Runner gun, it's, it's not. It's actually curved. And you can see, if you try and hold on to this, it's not that comfortable. Yeah, on your now grab that, and you'll see instantly there's more room and that's probably a modification made for Harrison you know once he held it ah, I really don't like it or Ridley made that call um, so as part of that I'm not totally finished with this gun but I cast this anyway so it's cast before I'm complete with my Blade Runner gun so again along the same lines 50 years down the line someone's on some forums and I say that yes. was I could tell a difference well luckily now they'll be able to look up a video and find me talking with all the way through Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Adam. So many Blade Runner pistols. <laughs> and, and yet, it's a saga unfinished. It is totally a saga unfinished. Awesome. Well, thank you again, and we'll be back from Adam's Cave with more amazing projects. I'm Norm. I'm Adam. See you next time. See you next time.